Today, I wanted to share with you a little bit about the June 2019 LSAT and what to do going forward. First off, it is permitted to discuss the experimental section versus the real section just to figure out, let's say if you got two logic games sections, which was the real logic games, which was the experimental, or if you got two reading comps or three logical reasonings, LSAC is okay with us talking about which ones were real and which ones were experimental. So in the chat here, I am listing for you what was real and what was not just to help you identify it. So if you had a logic game section involving oils and watercolors, that was the real one. If you had a reading comprehension section involving a patent a passage, including, for example, fish farming or witness testimonies, then you know that was the real reading comprehension. And the other one, whichever it was, was not the real one. Now, a lot of times after the LSAT, people feel like it didn't go that great. They consider canceling. I want to strongly recommend that you do not cancel your score, at least not immediately. You have up to six calendar days after the test to cancel if you want to do so. And so don't, first off, there's no reason to want to cancel, to cancel immediately. There's no benefit to canceling immediately when you could give yourself a couple of days to cool off, blow off some steam, look at it a little bit more objectively, and then decide from there, should you cancel or not? Now, I personally recommend that you rarely, if ever, cancel your score. The reason is that law schools do not average multiple LSAT scores. They only take the highest. So for that reason, there's really very little benefit to it. And a lot of times it turns out that people did better than they expected. There are people, I've heard stories where they walked out of the test feeling terrible, but they didn't cancel. Turned out they scored in the 170s and got scores they were very happy with. So for that reason, I strongly recommend don't cancel unless you know for a fact that something went horribly wrong, like you didn't complete an entire logic game or an entire reading comprehension passage when normally you do. If you just have this vague sense of unease that things did not go as well as they could have, then sure, that might give you reason to consider canceling, but ultimately I would suggest that you don't do it. I have a video that I'll share with you, the link here, where I actually walk through some of the considerations related to canceling or not. But again, schools do not average multiple scores. They only take the highest. So for that reason, I would not suggest canceling in most, if not all cases. Now, of course, you've got the July LSAT coming up just six weeks away. And so if you were prepping for June, whether you took it and didn't feel great, or you withdrew the last second beforehand, or you did take it and you felt okay, but you're not sure what to do now, should you retake? I would strongly suggest that you do retake it in July. There is only a six week gap between these two LSAT test dates. And so all you've got to do at a minimum is stay fresh on the LSAT for another six weeks. Maybe do another full length timed exam or two per week over the next six weeks plus detailed review. That alone could be enough. Plus also consider that there is a margin of error or score band of three and a half points on each end, meaning that let's say your true aptitude is a 160, one day you might get a 157, the next day you might get a 163, and the LSAT is still considered a perfectly valid test. What that means is that let's say you took it, you got your 160, that's great, but what if in July you could through luck alone get a 163 and then of course with another six weeks of studying you could do even better than that but just through luck alone three to four points better is an awesome position to be in of course the july lsat is unique because it's starting the transition towards the digital the, towards the digital lsat half of test takers will get the digital format half will get the paper and pencil format lsat chooses for you and you're not going to know in advance which might seem a little bit scary but LSAC is doing a few nice things for test takers to help ease the transition. First off, they are letting you see your score before you decide whether to cancel. This is huge. It removes a lot of the anxiety and ambiguity around taking an exam and potentially applying with a lower score, having a lower score on record. They will let you see your score before you decide whether to cancel, whether you get the paper version or the digital version. And if you do in fact decide to cancel, LSAC will give you a free retake on a future LSAT through April 2020. The LSAT registration fee is currently around $200. It was $190. It's just increased to $200. 
whether you paid the 190 or 200 will not impact which test form you get digital or paper as one person just asked me another person also asked me about the july lsat how should you study and of course the answer is study as if you are getting either paper or digital and you don't know so do some practice tests in the paper format do some in the digital format on the tablet lsac it has released a, a familiarization tool on their website familiar.lsac.org i strongly recommend checking it out i've been recommending that to you over the past few months and now they've released three lsats in that format tests 71 73 and 74 they'll be releasing even more in the lead up to the July LSAT or, or, and or the fall. So you will have many LSAT test forms available to you. I think the July LSAT is a great opportunity because you get to, you get to see your score before canceling if you want, and you get the free retake. So I think this test administration will be more popular than it would otherwise be. And of course, law school admission officers will be seeing lots of applicants taking July and canceling. So if you are in that position where you take it and cancel, you certainly will not be alone I wouldn't worry too much about it if you do want to cancel. Although, as I said earlier, there is very little reason to ever cancel your LSAT score because law schools do not average multiple scores. Again, they only take the highest. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Please feel free to reach out if you need anything at all. I run the LSAT blog. Again, I also host the LSAT Unplugged YouTube channel and podcast, and I love hearing from students. So yeah, feel free to reach out. All the best with your prep and take care.